First, we want to start with a short video as our student leaders want to recognize you teachers. Thank you to all the teachers who not only continue to educate us day in and day out, but also take the time to encourage us to follow our dreams and inspire us through their hard work and dedication. Thank you. Thank you teachers for educating and inspiring the next generation of leaders. Thank you so much teachers for all of your generosity and the hard work that you do for us. We all really appreciate it. Thank you for all the extra effort you make to help us grow and the challenges you encourage us to face. Hi teachers, thank you so much for your kindness, patience, and your support throughout the school year. We wouldn't be able to excel without you. Thank you teachers for always listening to us, being patient with us, and inspiring us to be better. We truly appreciate it. Thank you teachers for your kindness and your support through online and, and in-person in learning. Thank you teachers for your, your dedication, your humility, your patience, your kindness, your lovingness, your perseverance, and most importantly, your hard work. Thank you. And I think we found where this program really works is where teachers are involved, involved in mentorship, and those are the schools that are successful. So thank you again. And I'd la now like to introduce Erica Whitfield, school board member for Palm Beach County, and who's also an active participant in Philanthropy Tank. And we thank her for her get dedication to our kids and our community and uh, the help she's provided uh, to our organization. So I'll turn it over to you, Erica. It is my pleasure today to represent the school board to recognize our amazing teachers who go above and beyond for our students every day. I'd especially like to express appreciation to the teachers who decide to take on extra work to give opportunities like participation in organizations like Philanthropy Tank, Tank to our students. I believe these additional activities for our students make a valuable difference in the education of our children. The 55 community projects that have been funded during the last seven years of Philanthropy Tank have brought in over $600,000 in project funding to our neighborhoods and schools. Through this work, this organization has given students experiences in leadership and community service. Um, this past year, I had the privilege to work with students from the Coalition for Period Poverty, led by Ritka Ketchum from Suncoast High School. The idea they had was simple, that every menstruating person has the right to an education. I was thrilled these girls were interested in taking on this challenge. When I first joined the school board many years ago, actually also seven years ago, I took a tour of the Glades Area School. And I'll never forget what the principal told me, that one of the needs that children had were for tampons and pads. The students would get their period and then miss a week of school due to an inability to afford supplies. Uh, many community groups would donate the supplies, but the inventory was inconsistent. And then also students had to know to ask someone in the office for these supplies, which created a stigma and further inequity. Philanthropy Tank and the student's mentor reached out to me to connect them with the school who fit the level of need um, and would be interested in the project. During our conversations, I had an opportunity to explain to them how best to make changes in the school district. And I was so impressed with the dedication of the students and the support they received through Philanthropy Tank. The principal I suggested that they work with was Ms. Tamika Robinson at Santa Lucia's High School because I love her and it's one of my schools and I thought it would just be a perfect fit for them. The girls learned about how our purchasing process works, which is sometimes slow and painful. Um, some of the difficulties of getting approvals before new items go into our schools, which is also slow. Um, but they had a great teammate in Ms. Robinson and in their mentor, Takeda King-Pang, who helped um, navigate the system. I was able to go to the grand opening of the first dispensers at St. Alicia's last year. And following the ribbon cutting ceremony, we did something that doesn't normally happen very often at a ceremony. We all went into the women's bathroom at the end to see the dispensers in place. And it was such a wonderful experience for the students to see that their work had actually made a tangible difference in the lives of other students. This ability to turn a great idea into real change is the gift of Philanthropy Tank. Connecting our students to community philanthropists and giving them the power to move their worlds. I'm proud to say Rithika is starting her first year at Stanford this year, which is um, just such a great success story. And it's something that I want to see for all of our students to be able to go on to be the best selves. So one of the reasons that I really enjoy programs like this. And the Spencers are still going strong at Santa Lucia's. So for all the teachers out there, we have to think, who are the next students who make a difference in our community? Are they in your classroom right now? 
I encourage you to help the children of Palm Beach County to make a difference through Philanthropy Tank. And I'd like to thank all the sponsors who make it possible in our community. We're very privileged to have this opportunity here in Palm Beach County. And I really appreciate you being allowing me to speak today and best of luck in this school year. I know it's been really tough. Um, and we really are grateful to everyone for working so hard to make this year successful. And I have just so much hope for our future here in Palm Beach County. Thank you. So now I'd like to introduce Sam Friedman, um, a Sunco student and founder of South Florida Tech for Seniors. Sam started his project in 2020, and he's already been nationally recognized by the Diller Teen Awards for his contributions. Thank you for that introduction. Um, uh, like you said, my name is Sam Friedman, and uh, my project is South Florida Tech for Seniors. Uh, we're a, a nonprofit organization, and the whole the whole mission behind it was the main purpose of what we do is working with student volunteers to provide free technology support for senior citizens. Um, and this is something that I actually started. In fact, it's actually going a little bit longer than 2020 since the summer of 2019 um, that I've been working on this project, uh, which means that it completely predates COVID and everything that we saw with the technological shift. But I saw a big need, mostly just with my own family, working with grandparents and aunts and uncles and making sure they could you know, know how to use their phones and know how to use their laptops and their televisions and all these devices. Uh, and it just became apparent that this was going to be, you know, an increasing need becoming, you know, more and more prevalent. Uh, and so I, I wanted to set up a way for people who didn't have somebody like me who could help out um, to have a resource, to have a way to stay connected and not get left behind when it comes to technology. Um, so, you know, I started with just these, these small events where it was really just me and sitting down like you want the one you see in the, on the bottom right of that picture there. Uh, like that was the event. It was me on a couch and one person with a laptop. Um, and when I saw the, the philanthropy tank opportunity was actually uh, advertised through the school district. I thought that was a perfect opportunity to really expand what I was able to do because they provided us with um, really two key things. One of them is the financial resources to be able to build the, you know, the technology, the, the technology infrastructure and get stuff like devices and laptops and be able to scale that out for volunteers. Uh, and it's also the resources, having the people with the knowledge and the, the connections and the community uh, involvement is really strong and really important in helping to, to build this and scale this up. Um, so, we, you know, I've definitely been working hard at it. In fact, the next step of it that is currently in progress is setting up clubs at some of the local schools. So I'm working with my school, Suncoast, to uh, get an official school club, and we're doing some recruitment uh, tomorrow for students at the club over there. Um, and as was mentioned, we've actually been nationally recognized because the South Florida Tech for Seniors is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Uh, I spoke on the Kelly Clarkson talk show, uh, and I was recently a winner of the Diller Takuna Alum Awards, which is like a national um, award program. So, you know, it's definitely having that, uh, having that support and being able to, you know, use my knowledge of technology and my skills to really try to benefit other people in the community uh, and help out people who often get lost behind and aren't able to stay as connected with that technology. I know dealing with my 88 year old mother and on some of these issues, it takes a lot of patience and, uh, and work. So I think you're filling a, a actually a great need uh, um, with our senior community. So thank you. Our second project, I'd like to introduce Gabby Davis. She's an Olympic Heights student and president of CanCode. Um, and Gabby has actually taken over for the original founder of CanCode, Noah Rubin, who is now studying at University of Pennsylvania. And so she's a great example of how an organization has been able to thrive even when the original student founder leaves for college. So, um, and you know, I would assume that uh, you know, once Gabby goes to college, uh, um, she'll do the same process that uh, she's gonna talk about. So Gabby, we'd love to hear about your project. My name is Gabriella Davis, and I'm the current president of CanCode. We go to different community centers as the Youth Activity Center, Boys and Girls Club Boca Raton, Florence Bowler Centers, all of us being high school students. And we teach scratch-based coding to third to fifth graders. And this is really important because a lot of the centers we go to typically doesn't really receive the opportunities that we're granting, which is free workshops. Also, I want to highlight that free part because a lot of these centers also don't have computers, which is really important because with the philanthropy tank, we've been able to supply these centers with computers, letting them try out coding, letting them grow, 
The coding field in general is continuing to expand each year. And since these kids are learning to code now, they're getting an interest now. We're teaching them in ways where they can have Ariana Grande in the background of some Mario video game that they're making themselves. They get excited about this. And because they're excited, they want to do more coding and they want to learn and grow. And as they grow older, they're using those coding skills. So eventually when they reach my age, there's going to be a lot of college opportunities and a lot of job opportunities as well. And I also want to bring it back to philanthropy tank a little bit because their advice has helped us remain sustainable. Our team as it stands now is around 20 volunteers. We have four specialized teams and each of these teams breeds new leaders each year. And this was done with the help of the philanthropy tank. I'm already looking for successors. I know in the future, CanCode is going to be able to continue to learn and grow. Thank you, Gabby. Appreciate your enthusiasm and all the hard work that you're doing. And I know you will take it that next step. I'm Amy Brand. I'm the CEO of Philanthropy Tank. We have 55 programs that have been launched and are working and impacting the community since we started seven years ago. We have a quick video that illustrates some of our students' programs and where they are today. I saw the need for free sunscreen dispensers. We were able to purchase a huge stock trailer so we could get impact more lives. Our very first donation was about 75 pounds of Legos. I wanted to give these kids a different outlet that's not dangerous. Learn how to manage a business. When I would play soccer, there'd be kids coming to practice without chin guards or without cleats. I've been collecting soccer balls for about five years now. Philanthropy Tank gave me that ability to go from Wellington to Okahili, and we're looking to expand to all different cities. I heard about Philanthropy Tank through my best friend, and I just saw how great it was to get your program out there. Philanthropy Tank helped us gain recognition and connections. What it means for these families that we're helping, they always have somewhere to come to. It's not going to be something that once I leave for college in two years, it's going to die out. So it makes me happy because I feel like we can sustain ourselves. The funding from Philanthropy Tank went towards buying all the different sunscreen dispensers and get all the extra materials that they needed to keep them up. I was able to get four sunscreen dispensers up at UCF. I took it to college because I was accepted into the Lead Scholars program. As part of the curriculum, you have to do a service learning project. Since this has already been started down here, I thought it was a good thing to just bring it up there. Bricks Blessing Boredom began after our family realized how little so many children in children's hospitals had ways to express their creativity. We found what a good resource Legos were. While they're so expensive, parents will buy them for their kids, and then they won't want to get rid of them so let's sit in a garage or an attic and we thought this is a really good untapped resource we want to try our best to put those legos to good use the biggest part that Palm Beach Philanthropy Tank gave to us was the great mentoring and also helping us become a nonprofit organization. Coming into it, I knew I was about a year and a half away from going to college. My sister and brother, who were both in high school and middle school at the time, would be perfect to take over the organization. We knew that it needed to continue and it was necessary for people to just feel the happiness that the Legos and the parties bring. We're gonna go down the line as far as we can. The next step for Philanthropy Tank is we are really working on our alumni program and we we received a grant so that we can now start offering some internships and linkages to job placement. So that's kind of the next step as we have a lot of our first year students now graduating college and going on into either, uh, you know, the right into jobs or going into um, advanced education opportunities. So I just wanted to quickly review our benefits of the program, which I've heard from um, a couple of our students here today, but obviously the, the biggest one is about philanthropy in general and giving back and learning how to make change and positive change in their community, how to critically think about solving problems and uh, creating solutions. We also award community service hours to the students who participate and they receive a full year of youth development workshops and events. Um, Corey, who's our program director, leads our curriculum, which is not only professional workshops and trainings to learn how to run a nonprofit, but also personal skills. They learn how to work with uh, other volunteers and manage volunteers. They're learning how public speaking and how to work with the media. 
um, how to advocate for issues. So all those things are things that they learn through the program. And although it's a commitment of a year, there's certainly a, a long period thereafter of them learning and working with us and growing. And we also have many mentors from the, the industry. You've got Tom here on the call with us, who was with Otis uh, for many years as their CEO. And that experience of being in the corporate setting, working as an engineer, uh, talking to the students and sharing with them some, some critical career paths. Um, as I mentioned, they learn how to represent philanthropy tanks. So you saw some of them being interviewed and representing uh, not only what we do collectively, but what their organizations do and how they're um, working with different demographics in the community. Um, working with our business and community leaders, because we always are looking for people to help lead the workshops and talk about what they do in, in um, the real world setting. And then, of course, their learning skills and knowledge so that they can create their nonprofit organization. And we're really proud that many of our students, almost a third of our programs now, a little bit even higher, have gone on to create and establish their own nonprofit organizations, independent nonprofit organizations. So we really are an organization that has seen a lot of outcomes. Um, some organizations um, take the conceptual part of things, but we're really proud that we are really teaching the students how to implement and see their programs come to life. So um, with that, I want to introduce Corey Murphy, who's our program director, and he's just going to talk a little bit about our applications that are now open for students to apply. What I'm going to do is just take a second to um, talk about the timeline, talk about some supports we have for students, and then um, I have an ask of everyone on the call to help us connect with as many young people as possible to propagate the philanthropy tank opportunity. Our application closes on October 24th. And so students still have a couple of months um, before the deadline to submit an, uh, a project idea. Um, that application is then reviewed by our student grant review committee. This is a committee comprised of folks in the for-profit and nonprofit space, um, spaces who do a variety of different things. Um, a well-rounded uh, group of individuals who review all the applications. Um, by the end of the year, beginning of January, we notify our finalists on um, who is advancing to that next round. And um, then we prepare them for um, our final event. Um, this year, the final event, hopefully, will be held at the Kravis Center. Um, over uh, the past two years, it has been a virtual finals event. We all know why, um, but hopefully we can get um, to being back together with one another. It's where our young people pitch their ideas to um, philanthropists, investors. Um, these are people who are giving their time and their treasure to young people to help start um, the programs that you um, that you have heard of now, heard of before, and the programs that'll go into the future. Um, and um, in January, what we do is prepare our young people for that moment, um, help them with um, stage presence, help them prepare their presentations, help them finalize their their budgets, and ensure that they're ready for that pitch. Because um, when they are at the um, finals event. They are pitching their ideas Shark Tank style to um, philanthropic investors. Um, after the event, we work with um, our young people to prepare um, their 90 day plans and help prepare that launch pad for them to begin executing what they say they wanted to do. What I need from all the teachers on the call is to send this information far and wide to all of your students if you think they uh, might be a good fit for this program. Um, we have a variety of supports to help young people get um, their application submitted and really think through um, issues they might wanna solve in their communities. We have a variety of different workshops that we hold and um, we really work with young people to get the application prepared and submitted from A to Z. Our last slide, which is how to reach us, we have done a lot of workshops that have been uh, virtual, 
Um, we have worn masks and gone into schools where there's the comfort level as well to interact and lead ideation sessions. But we have a really um, strong opportunity to reach the students and work with them and help guide them through the application process. And we're happy to work with you.